The great battles of the Pacific Theater are dominated by the United States Marine Corps. From the heroic last stand at Wake in December 1941 to the bloody sands of Iwo Jima in 1945, U.S. Marines' spearheaded resistance to the Japanese led the island-hopping campaign across the Pacific towards the home islands. Though large numbers of U.S. Army personnel were also involved in many of the island battles against fanatical Japanese defenders, the Marines are the ones most readily associated with the hard fighting in the Pacific. But in North Africa and Europe, the story is quite different. From the Allied landings in North Africa in 1942 through to the invasion of France on D-Day in 1944, U.S. Marines are not mentioned despite numerous amphibious operations being conducted against the Germans and Italians. Did Marines play any role in victory in Europe? The answer is an emphatic yes, though on a far reduced scale compared to their brothers in the Pacific. U.S. Marines were among the first U.S. troops to see service in Europe in World War II, even before America became officially involved on the Allied side. In July 1941, the 4,000-man 1st Marine Provisional Brigade was dispatched under President Roosevelt's order to Iceland to relieve the British forces that had invaded to prevent the Germans from establishing U-boat and air bases there that could have further threatened Britain's Atlantic supply lines to North America. But the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941 caused the brigade's recall, and all Marines left Iceland largely for redeployment to the Pacific by early March 1942. The USMC was involved in the infamous Anglo-Canadian raid on Dieppe, France, on the 19th of August 1942. Brigadier General Harold D. Campbell, a Marine officer, was attached to the British Combined Operations Staff and helped plan the raid by 6,000 troops. Though Operation Torch, the Allied amphibious invasion of North Africa, involved four U.S. Army divisions and not Marines, the USMC had nonetheless trained these divisions in amphibious operations. Two small marine units, drawn from the Marines afloat aboard U.S. Navy battleships and cruisers, landed at two points on the North African coast. One at Arzo in Algeria, thence marching to the vital port of Oran, where they occupied an old Spanish fort, and the detachment from the cruiser USS Philadelphia that captured the airfield at Safi in Morocco. A number of U.S. Marines were loaned to the Office for Strategic Services, the OSS, being trained in espionage and sabotage and operating behind German lines alongside local resistance groups in France, Italy, Yugoslavia, Albania and Greece. In total, 51 U.S. Marines served in Europe in this very dangerous business, many being killed or captured. U.S. Marines were, contrary to popular belief, present on D-Day, 6th of June 1944. All large U.S. warships had Marine detachments, and they found unique service during the naval part of Operation Overlord. These Marines, many expert marksmen, were distributed among American warships that were approaching the Normandy coast. They were tasked with destroying by rifle fire any loose sea mines that threatened the fleet. During Operation Dragoon, the Allied landings in southern France in August 1944, U.S. Marines landed in force from the battleship USS Augusta and the cruiser Philadelphia at Marseille, accepting the German surrender of the port. Naturally, as the fighting moved further inland into Germany itself, U.S. Marine involvement diminished to being almost non-existent. But the Corps' earlier involvement with amphibious operations in North Africa and southern and northwestern Europe helped to speed the eventual Allied victory and deserve to be remembered. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. And also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.